Hello students. In this video, we're going to do a quick review of rounding, and then we'll do a couple of fairly simple area uh, questions, mainly just to show you the setting out that I prefer for that. Okie dokie, we want to round this number here, 3.2713, to one decimal place. So this is the method that I teach my students. After they've done this for a while, they can probably skip the setting out and just do it, but it's a good way to start. So first off, one decimal place is the two, so I underline that. I then circle the number behind it if there is one, which there should be, and then I cross out all the others. Doesn't matter what those are, they're not going to affect the answer. Looking at the circled number, if it's five or bigger, that means that rounds up to a three. In this case, it's a seven, so I'm not going to need that. I'm just going to put that two up to a three, and the final answer is 3.3. .3. Okay, if I'm rounding to zero decimal places, then that means I just want the nearest whole number. So what I'm gonna do is underline the whole number. I circle the number behind it, cross out the others, doesn't matter what they are, because that is less than five, that stays as a three. So zero decimal places just means to the nearest whole number. Okay, stop the video and see if you can correctly round the next two numbers to the number of decimal places given in the brackets. Okay, welcome back students. Let's see how you went. Okay, so I'm gonna round it to two decimal places. So I underline the nine, and then I circle the six, which is the next decimal point, cross out the one, because I'm not gonna use it, because that is five or bigger. The 79 has to go up to an 80. So the way I would prefer to write this is I'm going to round that up to 1.80. A lot of students, because they say that's the same as 1.8, will leave it at that. And I'm not too concerned if you round it back to 1.8 or 1.80. Okay, and this one, rounding it to one decimal place. Okay, so I underline the one decimal place, and then I have to circle the number behind it, cross out the other digits, it doesn't matter what they are. Because that's uh, five or bigger, the 2.9 has to round up to 3.0. So again, because that nine goes to a zero, the two has to go to a three. So again, you can write it as 3.0, probably that's slightly more accurate because you're saying it's accurate around it to one decimal place. If students want to write just three, um, I'm happy with that, but the best thing to do in these situations is ask your teacher what they expect. Okay, let's have a look at actually doing an area question. And because the areas of sectors might be new to some students, that's why we're going to do this one. So pretty much it's just three steps. Step number one is we write the formula. So you either memorize it or you look it up on your formula sheet. And I'm going to use the formula that's on the formula sheet, which looks like this. Theta, that's the Greek letter theta, over 360 times, in fact, I won't even write the times. I'll just go pi r squared. Okay, so copy the formula down or memorize the formula and write it down. Now that just represents the angle inside the sector. So this is 75 degrees. So you put 75 over 360. So that just tells us what fraction of the whole circle we have. Now don't use 3.14 for pi, unless your calculator doesn't have a pi button. My suggestion is leave it as pi and use your pi button, because that's a lot more accurate. And the radius in this case is 10 centimeters. So we just go times 10 squared. And the final step for setting out these questions is to get out the calculator and work out the answer. So in this case, I like to actually set it out so it looks exactly like that. So I'm going to use my, oops, I'm going to use my fraction button, 75 down over 360, right arrow multiplied by, now there's my pi button in yellow, so I need shift in pi, 
multiply by, and again, I'm going to use my power button. In fact, I can use my squared button, and I get 10 squared. So 75 on 360 times pi times 10 squared. Okay, correct to one decimal place is what it says here. So that's going to be 65.4. Looking at that number there, it's less than 5, so the 4 stays. So 65.4. And always add on the units, which is centimeters squared. Areas are always square centimeters. Okay, you have a go, please, at the question on the right. So stop the video and come back and check your answer. Okay, welcome back, students. Now, notice the setting out on the left is three lines of setting out. In general, that's what I tell my students, that every question involving finding areas, or for that matter, perimeter or surface area or volume, is three lines of setting out. Okay, that's to find each individual area. I'll show you what I mean by that shortly in the next video. Okay, so copy out the formula, put in the sector angle, which is 199 over 360. Again, use your pi button on your calculator. It's more accurate than 3.14, and the radius is 1.57 squared. Okay, let's get out our calculator to do the calculation. I'll drag it off to this side. Might as well clear it. Once again, I like to set it out exactly as it looks in the equation. There's less chance of making a mistake. So 199 over 360, right arrow, times, and the pi button comes from shift and pi, times, and I'm going to square it. Oh, what have I done there? Let me delete what I just did. Delete what I just did. Right arrow. Don't know how that happened. Okay, times. Oh, maybe I forgot the times. And 1.57. Okay, quick check. 199 on 360 times pi times 1.57 squared. All looks good to me. And rounding to one decimal place, it's going to be 4 point. Well, there's a 2 there now, but the number behind it's an 8, so that becomes 4.3. 4.3 meters squared. And there we go. So basic idea behind almost every question involving measurement is three lines of setting out. Write the equation, sorry, write the formula, substitute into the formula, work out the answer. Okay, and for the most part, that's how you set out your questions and you can't go wrong if you follow that little pattern. Okay, in the next video, we'll look at some compound shapes.